Hi, so I'm going to be showing you how to create a TeamSpeak 3 server on Linux. Uh, I'm going to be using CentOS 5.8, 32-bit. Uh, it's pretty much the same instructions for anything like Red Hat or Ubuntu or whatever, but CentOS, it's free. It's a good, good, good solid operating system. I actually have a TeamSpeak 3 server running at my home using it right now. Uh, so let's get started. First off, you're going to want to go to uh, CentOS, just Google it, download the version that you want, 32 or 64 bit. I use 32 bit because I, I, I run my server with about 256 megs of RAM and it runs fine. I pipe a, about 10 gigs of data through it in about 20 days. Not too much, but it, it works. My guildmates don't have a problem with it, so have a gig of RAM or 256 megs of RAM actually and a 20 gig hard drive is more than enough to do what you need to do uh, so let's me since I, I, I run my servers on VMware ESX I, I have an HP micro server running at home with everything on it with 16 gigs of RAM so I'm not touching my actual server I'm going to be creating a new server for you guys to, to see what's going on so instructions may be different for you in getting it set up but actually going through and configuring the server once you're once you have selected the operating system, it that's all this that's all gonna be the same. So this is after I've installed the the operating system, this is CentOS saying welcome have a few more things to set up. Yes, I want SSH on. I want the firewall on. I'll show you how to configure the ports later on. Do not have SE Linux enforcing. It is just not worth it. It's a pain in the butt to, to deal with. So turn it off. Yeah, you, you want to reboot. No big deal. The time is right. So I don't know why it says 8, but whatever. It, it It's right. <laughs> if you want to, do do NTP and enable it and it'll set the time using the, the internet from here on out. Uh, so let's go TeamSpeak. <coughs> Finish, it'll say, hey, I have to reboot, that's fine. Um, this server actually has more RAM than it needs right now. I just wanted to build it quickly. So if you look here, you see that the server has uh, 2 gigs of RAM, but it has a 20 gig hard drive. And honestly, that's all it needs. I mean, it doesn't need much more. So it's starting the new, new starting the OS up after I configured the user and created the password and all that stuff so once this is done we will go ahead and show you how to uh, install a uh, TeamSpeak Obviously, if you're going to be running this, since I'm, I'm not going to install VMware tools, since I'm not going to be leaving the server up, uh, you will want to install VMware tools. It makes uh, makes it a lot easier because you have it, it installs the VMXNet3 driver. It installs. It allows you to move the mouse out of the window without having to press Control Alt to release it. So you can do that. It's just a whole. It makes life a lot easier as a sysadmin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is log in as root. And 
this is the the reason I say this is because the there are a few changes we're gonna make before we uh, actually install and download Teamspeak. The first thing you're gonna want going to want to do is uh, open up the firewall. And for right now, I'm lazy, so I'm using the uh, the GUI. I will take this down to run level three, which is full multi-user mode. But uh, at the moment, it's just a lot easier to uh, to to do this with the GUI and just just call it a day that way. Uh, the ports you want open are nine 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 eight seven for UDP, one zero zero one one for TCP, and if you want to enable file transfer, three zero zero three three. Hit apply say yes, it's just saying that you're going to commit the changes to the firewall, hit OK. Uh, preferably, you don't want to make your TeamSpeak user a uh, an admin on the box because it's just, it, it's security, so if you do uh, want to add another user, you can always do user add John and it, so you just created the user, user for John just change the password for John. Type in a secure password and then VI sudo. Go all the way down here to allow root commands to be run. Allow root to run commands anywhere. Do John all equal all. To type press escape, type shift colon, right quit, exclamation mark, enter, will uh, save the command, save the text file. Uh, I did forgot, forget to mention that when you do vi sudo, when you get to the spot, you will want to hit I. So if I want to insert something here, press I, type in what you want, hit escape, hit right quit, exclamation mark, enter and your changes will be saved. So I'm going to do this, and since I don't want to save the changes, I'm just going to quit and go back, and you see the file's not there. Uh, the next thing you're go going to want to do is go to uh, the internet, and apparently I don't have Firefox on here, which is not a problem. If you... Uh, yum. Type in yum space install space Firefox, you will then install Firefox. And since I'm running this as root, I don't need to type in sudo or anything like that. It it just does it because I'm root. Just hit yes, it's just making sure that you agree that you're installing Firefox. It's going to take up 44 megs of data or 44 megs of space on your hard drive and that you're updating the, the PGP key or the GPG key for uh, CentOS 5, which is fine because you know you're installing fi 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 Firefox. And just so you, just so you know, this is my uh, production TeamSpeak server right here. Uh, let me show you how I run this. And you'll see there is, it is very, it does not use much memory. It's got 256 megs of RAM, and it's running, it has one CPU. And if I go to performance, and I look at the memory here, it is using at max. 107 megabytes of, of RAM. <laughs> so, essentially nothing. I mean, you have a lot more space to go. It, it usually averages about 20 to 30 megabytes of RAM. Let's go back here. No, I don't want to open up FaceTime. I want to open up that. So, I now have Firefox. I'm going to go here, open up the web browser.
go to teamspeak.com you could do a wget I I don't because you I don't know the URL after the after you would read that you're not going to export the the file to China or not China but like Iran and Syria and stuff so since this is a 32-bit server I'm going to choose this one the server x86 if you're it's a 64 you choose the AMD 64 hit download I mean, this is self-explanatory. You want to save the file. Click OK. Save it to desktop. Save. So it's now saved to your desktop. The important thing to do now is to log out. And log back in. Because we need to create the uh, directory for the user for the TeamSpeak user. Let's copy this. We're going to do this the, la the lazy way. We're going to go file system. We're going to go home. We're going to go TeamSpeak. We're going to go des desktop, and we're going to paste this onto the TeamSpeak user desktop. The other, uh, you can use the MV command or the CP command, but. Just so you see the 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 the, the path, it's uh, slash home slash TeamSpeak or slash home slash user slash desktop or wherever you'd like to move it. So apparently, I uh, I forgot to do something. Actually, I, for, I forgot to to do two things. So we're gonna log out as the TeamSpeak user again. We're gonna log log back in as root. Wrong root password. And I typed that wrong. <laughs> Sweet. There we go. So we're gonna change the modification the the permissions on that TeamSpeak file. So we're gonna go Remember, tab completion is your friend. What I did, I just did slash home, tab, team, te, tab, tab, and you're there. Uh, and then I want to go vi slash etc slash init d. Change, you see here where it says ID colon 5, where the mouse is, where the cursor is right now? Change that to 3. Run level 3 is pretty nifty. Um, what it does is it runs the system in full multi user mode, but without the console, without the GUI. So when we reboot this, it will come up as a much simpler, it'll come up as a system that looks like this. It runs, it, it requires fewer resources, and it just makes life so much easier. It runs as that, that's the full operating system, there's nothing to worry about. 
if you need to bring the GUI back, I'll show you how to do that. But you need to make that change. So again, you go vi etsy init tab, init d, sorry init tab, and you change id colon five to id colon three in a default, and that's all you need to do. So let's, uh, let's log out. Let's log in as the Teamspeak user. And now we're going to have some fun with the command line. So click on accessories, bring up the terminal, cd desktop, do an ls, you see it's there, so then you want to do a tar-zxvf, and it shows you what is un unzipping. You then go change the directories to the TeamSpeak server, do an ls, and you see that you now have this t ts3 server underscore start strip dot sh. So do a dot slash, and you are now running a server. There's your server admin password, which you'll want to keep. There's your token, which you'll want to keep. And you can actually just hit enter, and your server's up and running. Um, if you want to stop it, you type in the hard command of the same thing, and you do stop, and it stops the server. If you need to restart it, you can do, you type in restart, it stops it, it restarts it, and you're set. So now what we're going to do is, now that we have that, we're going to start the server. We're going to go here. We're going to go connections, connect. I need to know what the IP address of the, th of the server is. That would really help. Uh, the IP address is going to be slash aspin one seven two twenty zero dot fifty eight. Connected to the server. And there you go. The server's now you uh, now see that the server's on and it's you can configure it and do everything that you need to do. I'm not gonna I'm since I'm deleting the server it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter to me if I have an admin, if I if I'm an administrator or not. Um, so let's stop the server because that's what you need to do before you reboot the server or anything like that. You stop the TeamSpeak server because otherwise you can corrupt the database. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and restart the server. You will see that the GUI will not come back up. The instructions are pretty much the same as for the Mac 2 here. Um, just the, the editing the firewall and, and, and other things like that, it's, it's done slightly differently mainly because the Mac has a much more functional, it's not, functional is the wrong word, but the GUI, it's designed more to be used with with a GUI instead of strict command line. Um, running the TeamSpeak server on a Mac is also, in my opinion, not as good as running it with Linux because you have to keep the uh, terminal window open. At least that was the way it was when I did run it on Mac. I've run it, I've run it on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And uh, Linux, in my opinion, is actually the best system to run it on because it's it, it doesn't require any care and feeding. Here, let me show you the virtual machines, and you'll see. I mean, there's really. This is the TeamSpeak server. It's using 271 megs. It has 271 megabytes of RAM allocated to it, but it's only using 6% of that. It's. 
it really it's a very lightweight application so you see how there's no GUI it's all console that's how it's supposed to be yeah, I know I'm running uh, let me get my battery sorry guys <laughs> forgot to charge um, so let's log in as TeamSpeak logged in who am I? Shows you that I'm the TeamSpeak user. So let's go CD slash desktop and do it. And let's connect back to that server and we will see that the server is up. Uh, let's just dis disconnect again and if you go in here and you do an LS you'll see lo the logs, logs directory in here sorry I can do so much better than this normally these are the logs that shows you what's going on with the server if you ever need to figure out what is what your old password was it shows you your server admin privilege key it gives you it gives you your, your token it doesn't I, I, it doesn't give you the uh, the password for server admin which you will want to write down and keep in a safe place um, but besides that, honestly, that's all there is to, to writing a, to, or to starting up a server. If you need to get to the GUI, type in init5 if you have it. So, to get to, to a GUI, you got to be root and you type in init5 and it will start the GUI for you. Uh, login is root, you're set. Besides that, you really honestly won't need the GUI if you follow these instructions. Open the firewall. Remember, open the firewall when you have the GUI. You can use IP tables. I'm too lazy to re remember the command. I probably should, but I just, since I'm going to be doing a lot of things with the GUI anyway, when I first start the server up, I, op I open up the firewall ports using the GUI and uh, call it a day afterwards after that. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments or, or whatnot, and I will see what I can do to reply. I will also be opening up a, uh, a new uh, instructions to open up the firewall ports in a later movie, uh, in a later uh, YouTube video. Thanks for watching.